How's it going? Uh, so you guys all know who Andy Horowitz is before I get started? I don't want to, I want to know like how much I should like mansplain it to you or whatever. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm really sorry for that. Yeah, so this is the roast of Andy Horowitz. And I really, so I guess the first thing you should know about Andy Horowitz is like he just sucks. And I felt sort of guilty being real mean about him in this. So I just want to let you know I'm not usually like this. So who is Andy Horowitz? It's something we all ask ourselves every morning. Uh, he, in his younger years, he uh, created the show The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Uh, Fun fact about Andy Warwitz. Really? Yeah. Uh, look, there's some Emerald Smith. <laughs> he later started a website called The Warwitz Report, which The New Yorker acquired in 2012, and now he is the chief satirist at The New Yorker. Um, according to his Wikipedia page, a profile on CBS Sunday Morning uh, called him one of the funniest people in America. <laughs> um, and, you know, he's actually really popular. Uh, like, in terms of the New Yorker's uh, internet traffic, his stuff is always trending at number one or two. He accounts for 6% of all of the New Yorker's traffic, which is like a lot considering how many articles they publish that aren't by him. Um, and the site um, Pointer called him perfect, funny, a treasure. Um, these are what people on Twitter have to say about him. Uh, every player in this picture looks like they just read a Borowitz headline. Uh, remove the Borowitz report. Borowitz is worse than Putin and Trump and climate change combined. And my personal favorite, the New Yorker is fighting fake stories with real ones, and they're fighting comedy with Andy Borowitz. <laughs> So let's, let's take a look at what, what he's done, what he has done. Um, Trump here's his satire. Trump supporters furious that they still have health care. You guys can laugh, by the way. Uh, Mueller rents giant warehouse to store evidence against Trump. Russians involved in Trump campaign hold reunion. Obama begins calling American people to console them about Trump being president. Um, so, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, I should say that I write about politics for a living, and so I'm very uh, hard on political humor, especially in these days. I think it is really hard to make fun of Trump and all those people, but I think he, Andy Horowitz does an exceptional leave out job. <laughs> so here is the about section on his Facebook. There is a fine line between sexual networking and wasting your fucking life. You want to talk about wasting your fucking life? Here are some of Andy Horowitz's Twitter jokes that he made before he quit. That's I just want to like talk about how not funny this one is. Romney, I fundamentally disagree with the president's foreign policy. On day one, I'll bring Osama bin Laden back to life. Hashtag debate. Like, it's just like, it's not even a joke. It really pisses me off. Like, deep bro. And like, I have like also like sort of ethical issues with like referring to all Trump supporters as idiots because I think it's far more complicated than that. Um, 
So that's Andy Borowitz. But I want to be nice for a second, because as I was researching my, this, I saw some Borowitz headlines that I didn't think were like the worst. Um, I thought that one is probably his best one he's ever done. He's had this website since 2009, so it's taken him that long. Uh, nation desperately hopes re reason for Bannon's exit will not involve sex tape. Like, fine. That's fine. Better than usual. Able-bodied senior who watches TV all day receives free government meals. Actually, that one might be his best. That's, like, pretty good. Gotta hand it to him. Uh, Obama signs executive order requiring president of the United States to be a taxpayer. Like, brutal. <laughs> He's like, you know, I looked up interviews of him talking about this and I don't really think that any of the quotes are worth repeating to you, like you don't need to spend your time doing that, but like, I think he thinks he's really good. But the thing that makes me most angry about him is his syntax. I, I write the news for a living, I write headlines, I'm constantly talking to my coworkers about how to package something, how to sell it, and Headlines need to be eloquent and say, say your story in as few words as possible. Um, Borowitz does not do this. So let's take this one, for example. Republican health care plans lack co lacks coverage for injuries resulting from body slamming. That's like wordy. Comedy is supposed to be like, not that. Um, <laughs> So, I want to help him out though. So, here my, here's what I was thinking. Republican health care plan lacks coverage for body slamming victims. Immediately we cut out some words. Still bad. Here, this changes it a little bit. Republican health care plan makes getting body slammed a pre-existing condition. Okay, we're getting somewhere. But, um, it's like, I don't think the premise is that strong because he wrote this after um, a reporter uh, for The Guardian was body slammed by a, a congressional candidate. Um, and so this doesn't really make sense with the story, like too much, but whatever. Um, but the most egregious case is this one. Um, I'm, I'm like deeply upset by this still. CDC, millions of Americans in areas colored blue will be too sick to report to work Thursday morning. So this was written, um, uh, right, like he's referring to Comey's testimony that, do you guys remember when Comey was supposed to give like that explosive testimony that wasn't so explosive. I read about politics, so I do. Um, and like, people were apparently like taking off work to watch it or whatever. But uh, this is just like not. It's not funny, but also like, does he not have an editor? <laughs> Luckily, I'm here. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, like, I think this is the most egregious thing I've ever read. <laughs> okay, CDC, millions in blue states, too sick to work Thursday morning. Boom. Cut out, like, half the words. <laughs> CDC, millions of Democrats afflicted with mysterious illness preventing them from working Thursday morning. Less elegant, but it more captures Warwick's sentiment. But here's the one that I think works best. CDC, 65 million, 800, whatever. 65.8 million Americans suddenly <laughs> too sick to work Thursday morning. Those are, that's the number of people who voted for Hillary. Like, that's, that could be like a subtle joke. I'm just trying to like make his premise work. 
and it's hard because it's a bad idea to begin with. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I think like something that's upsetting about Andy Gorowitz is like, I think he's particularly offensive to young people. Like, young people hate it because like, they know how bad it is. I think he appeals to like, grandmas more, or I, I really don't know, uh, but much like Antonin Scalia needed to do long before he passed away, Andy Borowitz also should just like retire. You know, he had the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, he could have had a decent comedic legacy, but he has destroyed himself. Um, but I'm not sure that Andy Borowitz would understand like Andy Borowitz retire bench. Uh, <laughs> So, let me rephrase. <laughs> CBC, after getting epically, burned, epically roasted by Eve Pizer, Andy Borowitz will be too sick to report to work Monday morning. <laughs> Republican health care plan lacks coverage for Andy Borowitz's injuries resulting from housing works roads. <laughs> Also, just quickly, like, I didn't talk about how stupid this idea is, but it's just like, it's not even like the, the first joke you think of. It's like not even there. It's like, you know what I mean? Like sometimes you're like, oh, it's an obvious joke. This is like, it's not an obvious joke. It's just like, oh, so the joke is that Trump has done so many bad things he needs a warehouse, but like, yeah, a giant warehouse. Uh, but like, that's not a joke. Like, it's, there's no joke there. Anyway, sorry. Um, Borowitz rents warehouse to store ointment for all those birds. 